Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Fratello Talks. I'm your host, Nacho, and this week I'm joined by my colleagues, Lex and Thomas. And we're going to be discussing our Q1 highlights, best releases so far of mm. 2024. That's what we're going to uh, We've each picked, I think, three uh, main picks and three honorable mentions, but I think we'll quickly go off the rails and just talk about many of the watches that have mm. come out this year yep. so far. Mm -hmm. uh, before we talk about those watches, though, let's talk about the ones on our wrist. Lex, what is on your wrist today? The Oris Diver 65 Momotaro edition. Very nice. Yeah. On its denim strap. Yeah, 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 yeah. On it, and this, I'm, I once wrote that I was going to uh, really have this uh, developed nice patina, just like uh, Thomas's wonderful uh, salvage, salvage yeah. uh, Japan jeans. But uh, it turns out I'm actually uh, pretty cautious with it <laughs> because I okay. don't want it to okay. get too damaged. But uh, okay. yeah, so I like it. Very nice. Very, very nice. And Thomas, what's on your wrist today? I am wearing um, because you're wearing the thing that's been it's fine. that's it's been fine. taking all my wrist time recently. <laughs> but so I've uh, I've taken the opportunity to wear an old favorite, my uh, Speedy, 1970 nice. Speedmaster um, 145.022-69 slash okay. slash no, nothing. Good no, that was, that was the six nine. Um, and mine's got a misprint bezel, the two twenty bezel. Oh yeah, so you should uh, return yeah. it. Do you still have the uh, receipt? Yeah, <laughs> it might be a bit too late. Yeah, it, it might, might be a bit, a bit too, too late. late. But um, okay. it's a uh, it's a funny little quirk. I've written about it on uh, yeah. on Fortello. Yeah. And, uh, a very cool watch. It has some nice patina yeah, on the, the loom. Patina and it's is just, nice. It's just hey, vintage speedy man. It's uh, and you can't 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 go wrong. It, here you can see what the difference between patina and faux patina. There yeah, is there is that. such a yeah. such a difference. That's the real deal. Yeah. 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 Years in the sun. Fantastic. So, uh, yeah, and Thomas, you already sort of uh, uh, said what's on my wrist, but I'm wearing the uh, VPC Type 37HW uh, on a NATO because I was curious to to see it on a NATO and to it wear it on great a NATO. On NATO. Um, and I, <laughs> it turns out it's yeah. uh, I, I sort of went through some uh, strap options uh, earlier today and uh, I put it on, a, on an Artem Hydroflex. Uh, several NATOs. The uh, sand one was nice as well. Sand was really really nice. Yeah. It brought out the warmth of the of the uh, of the dove gray dial. Uh, but I really like it on this uh, sort of olive drab uh, uh, NATO strap. But, uh, yeah, yeah, it looks good. It cool. takes a NATO well, and uh, yeah, it's it's. What's the case size again? Thirty-seven. Ah, it's too small for me. To find. <laughs> you should. Oh, was, to oh, last week. Uh, it was a different large, episode. Oh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> we'll uh, we'll circle around. Just to clarify, you're wearing my prototype. This Just is the if prototype. People think like, yes. hey, that's not out, right? Yeah. That's, no, no, that's no. Yeah, this is I I, yeah. I snatched it off uh, Thomas's wrist and yeah. uh, and we'll return it promptly. Uh, but uh, but yeah, it's uh, yeah. So let's let's get started with our picks. Oh. Uh, Lex. Oh yeah. What is your what if what have been some of the watches? Uh, yeah. well, what's been your top of the list for you for watches that have come out this year so far? I chose to uh, go high end, just high okay. end. Um, also because I recently wrote a story about uh, the making great of complications. Uh, that's a really weird sentence. Make complications great again. The making of complications great again. Good watches stuff. Anyway, no, well, we your vote. So <laughs> we'll go later this year. No. So I'm. Yeah. So, so I. I. Uh, the, the first one that we had that in the office, and um, I saw it from afar. Didn't really appreciate it, and then I picked it up, inspected it, and then I really dug the Fleming Series One in tantalum. I really, really liked it. It's really nicely done, and I know it's competing with uh, Thomas's VPC for attention. But what I what I like is about is it? The, <laughs> no, no. But what I like is that both watches are made by people who are crazy about watches, and of course, uh, the Fleming is on a, a totally different uh, in a to totally different price league because it's a uh, forty five thousand uh, five hundred. <laughs> but it's also just uh, it's it's just wonderfully done with the uh, the Conode uh, uh, movement. Yeah. Um, it's in it, balance bridge, right? Yeah, exactly. I, I remember seeing that and yeah. thinking, wow, that's that's yeah, super it's, it's impressive. It's super impressive. It's also it also has a very nice uh, 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 the proportions are nice. It's a thirty-eight point mm five -hmm. um, millimeter tantalum case, nine millimeters thick. It has these beautifully sculpted horned lugs mm -hmm. that I really really uh, enjoyed to see something different. You know, something that is. Uh, you see so many of the same sure. different case shapes, and that this is uh, done and different. And then, of course, there's the dial. Yeah, the, uh, it's a sector dial that's uh, Aventurine and uh, frosted platinum, <gasps> um, made by Comblemine. 
you know, from uh, Kari uh, Vautilainen. Yeah. Um, so what, and in the end, what you actually get feels a bit like an uber luxurious uh, field watch. Mm -hmm. But that's for people who, are, who will go out picnicking and will have their champagne and caviar on a Kashmir picnic blanket. While listening to Fertilla Talks. They will still be in a field. And uh, so no, I, I, I it, how many uh, neatly trimmed fields? How many yeah. watches do you get that have full tantalum cases? I know there was that Seamaster chronograph, that, yeah. that tri metal uh, with some tantalum in it, and I, I know other watches that have tantalum as well, part of their cases. But there was once a long, there was many moons ago. There was a, a tantalum uh, Mont Blanc diver. Uh, it was a dive watch made of tantalum. It okay. was actually not okay. a dive watch; it was a sink watch. Yeah, of course. It was and, incredibly. And, yeah, dense. and what was funny is when they released uh, their uh, the, the the current dive watch, Mont Blanc said, "This is our first dive watch," and I thought, mm, "No, it's not. You still have that. That was a star classic, or or star something sports star, right? Something with a star. They do everything okay. with stars. But, but, but that was to, in just to keep us on track. That yeah. was oh, the, that was your sorry. first pick, the yeah. Fleming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've got, got other stuff. And you've definitely you, you gone. Wanna, yeah, let's do, let's do a round. Yeah, so uh, I'm done talking for now. Well, we'll leave me for last. So Thomas, what's yeah. what's your first pick? Uh, got a little list. Oh my god, um, that's a tiny list. The first one. Yeah, let let me. It is tiny. It's very condensed. Everything. Yeah, yeah. That's why you got glasses. Nicely proportioned, though. How thick is it? I didn't want to block the entire view. How thick is that list? Oh please, please. We'll bring out the calipers later and yeah. we'll, we'll okay. put yeah. all the specs on screen. Yeah, because <laughs> specs are important, man. They are. Um, speaking of specs, my first entry is an update uh, to some specs for a very popular Seiko diver. Ah, So mm -hmm. you had the SPB 143, I Correct. think it was yep. called, yep. which was already a very popular watch and very few things were wrong with it. Mm -hmm. And still Seiko decided, you yeah. know what, let's upgrade it a little bit. And I think they succeeded. But just a little bit. A little bit. It's nice. But it's it, really I like, nice. I like that they did this. We watched the, the, the explanation video, uh, the yeah, presentation I that. I was of on that. holiday. You were not there. Yeah, I, oh my, I'm so I, bummed. The, I, the, there was the other Seiko. Fratelli uh, who watched that with me. Yeah. That was That's a very... Uh, Let me first introduce yeah. the changes and then yes, you can please. explain how they were made because yeah. that's what you saw in that yeah. video. So it's I, the SPB451, which is mm -hmm. the black dial version of the mm -hmm. dive watch. It's been made a little bit smaller, mm -hmm. a little bit Slimmer, shorter, yeah, a little bit yeah, thinner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's also been upgraded in terms of water resistance. So yep. it's made thinner, yep. but it's also now 300 meters water resistant rather than 200. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The gray sunburst dial is now black, mm -hmm. matte black, yeah. which I honestly very much prefer. I, Isn't I that an artist as well, matte black? That is also an artist. Right, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's true. The date is now no longer a three, but yeah. at four thirty. Yeah. Uh, also controversial. I see some people disliking it. I love it because at first glance you don't notice it. It really hides yeah. very well between the, the dial uh, symmetry yeah. with the indices. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And there have just been some refinements like like that, and uh, in the process it got I think a hundred euros. More expensive, which yeah. honestly... Did you mention the movement? Also the movement Yeah, uh, movement changed. also upgraded. Now three days power reserve, yeah. which is only a few hours more than it used to be. Yeah. But okay. Every hour counts. <laughs> Every hour counts. It was closer to 300 euros, I think, the the, yeah. the price price increase. Mm -hmm. I, I believe so. Mm. Maybe I took I a, as I reference know. the original price and perhaps the latest ah. price for the SPB 143, then it was a smaller difference. But, what I uh, think I saw, but we'll correct it in the notes if we must, yeah. but I think the... The outgoing 143 was 1300. Right. And yeah. this one was 1400. But okay. correct me if I'm wrong. I think wrong, you, could, but you, you may well be yeah, right. Yeah, you had yeah. the original. Because the SPB has gone up uh, <clears throat> several uh, several times yeah. since, since it first came out when it was 900. Oh, yeah, something, yeah that's right. Then, yeah, no, that's yeah. right. Yeah. It was currently on the website still for 1300. So, okay, well, okay. so then 100 just, yeah. um, markup, but yeah. then there's quite a lot of improvements, I think. There's yeah. different colors. I'm, I mean, I've been talking about the black one now, but there's different colors. Yeah. And and you know how yeah. they did it. Uh, we we watched the uh, the online uh, press presentation from uh, from Tokyo, mm -hmm. and then they uh, explained in great length um, why they changed and how they changed. And what was in, what was really interesting, uh, for instance, the uh, the water resistance that went from 
200 to 300 while still realizing this uh, a slimmer case this le- um, they improved the the inside the the architecture or the or the mm-hmm. shape so it could deal with uh, with pressure uh, better while uh, being slimmer and also the 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 upgrades to the movements and what mm-hmm. i really liked about it is that they really went in deep to explain to us what they did yeah. so we could also then explain it to our readers so it's not mm-hmm. just oh i don't like the fact that it now says three days uh, uh, you know there is yeah, so no, much more that, okay way, yeah well <laughs> there you go no but there was so much more going on and yeah, i think yeah. in the in the end they created a better product and of yeah. course it's still a matter of taste if you like the date at uh, three or at uh, four four thirty mm-hmm. but um this really is is a better watch. So um, the thing, just to clarify, like water resistance, you get greater water resistance by yeah. making it less sensitive to warping under pressure. That's yeah. the whole name. Yeah, that's of the, game. the that's the thing. Yeah, and they exactly. didn't do it by making the materials thicker. No, which no is it's the way more you it's more rigid. It, it's more rigid. They they created the, the, the yeah the structure. Yeah. So it's more uh, it's stiffer. It's a yeah, stiffer exactly. uh, stiffer watch. And, like. and the, the, you got to respect the brand for doing it because yeah. it's it. They, they, there was no real reason yeah. to do it, and we get comments like this on other watches yeah, that but, we'll mention later down the line. But, but, yeah, but still, you know, this we are—it's a great thing. In <laughs> essence, uh, uh, this is a product. It's, it's a technical product that should evolve. So sure. innovation sure. is uh, is is like the what do yeah. you call that? The, the the meaning of life for 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 watches sure. is is innovation. And whether and it's marginal or extreme, it makes a difference. Everything is marginal nowadays, of course, and and yeah. and this is quite marginal. But these are quite a few elements that are marginal mm-hmm. that in mm-hmm. the end make quite a big difference. Absolutely. So I was also actually I was very impressed by that watch. Yeah. Yeah, that one was uh, going to be on my list. We obviously uh, talked about it before to not uh, have too much overlap, but uh, but yeah, great uh, great release. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and uh, and definitely worth including uh, mm-hmm. here today. Uh, the first one on my list, uh, oh. I also have a I also have a list is the uh, actually um, kind of harkening back to uh, when we talked about the best watches of 2023. Mm-hmm. I also included a Giro Perigo chronograph. Uh, yeah. That time it was in a special eight tech forged carbon oh, case. Oh God, yeah. Um, nice. With a little bit of titanium cool. um yeah. and now they have uh basically uh given us a uh gerard pergo laureato chronograph uh ti-49 and it's uh, basically just a full titanium version of the laureato chronograph 42 millimeters um and it's a lovely thing it's very gray there's not a lot of color to it and <laughs> it just it just looks is it fantastic. nicer than the zenit chronomaster sport in titanium um yeah that was the it's question completely it? different it's, watch it's but. a totally different watch it's a, it's somewhat of a different price point um how much is the laureato the laureato is closer to 20000 i believe okay and the uh, and the, uh, the zenith is uh, more 14? around 14 i believe 14. something something yeah. like that i think they're completely different watches yeah, um, yeah, yeah. i think they're both great um, yeah. It's worth giving the Zenith a shout out because that's also a Q1 uh, release this year. But uh, no, for me it was the it was, it was the, on my uh, honorable mentions list. Ah, so oh, you just well, ticked it well, off. You can me. mention it it's again, been, and then with honor it's been, because uh, now we just mentioned it's been it. unceremon- unceremoniously mentioned, yeah. and we'll, <laughs> we'll re-mention it again. No, but that's that's a, that's a great one, and uh, yeah, definitely uh, deserves, uh, I believe, a spot on, on on my list. I have a question: Do you think that 2024 will be the year of titanium? It may well be. It, it, it's it, it starts. It's shaping up to be. It's shaping up to be. So right? far, so far, yeah. I would be say a bad so. year for RJ. Then I'm afraid it's a bad oh, yeah. year for famous, RJ. Uh, famous bad hater of light metals. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but we've yeah, seen plenty of gold. So true. yeah, true. true. You yeah. know, it's gold and titanium. That's yeah. that's the way to go. And uh, and then next year it'll be two tone titanium gold watches. Wow, which were big in the '90s, so it makes sense. It's all it's all coming back full circle. Yeah, Alex, what is your second pick? Ah, I have something you wrote about. And that is the Renault Tissier Monday. Yes, I think it's just um, it's just awesome to have. Uh, first of all, to have uh, Dominique Renault, or famously mm-hmm. of uh, Renault et Papy, who yep. created uh, fantastic movements for. Uh, they founded their. Um, well, there you go. Yep. You just did the whole. Yeah, I did the yeah. research yeah. for the article. Well, they yeah. created wonderful movements, of course, for uh, Audemars Piguet, but also for uh, yep. Richard Mille. Um, and now he's back together with uh, Julien Tissier, a. Uh, a watchmaker that looks like a heavy metal guitar player. So he has my vote 
any time. Um, sort of up and comer, uh, yeah. watchmaker, uh, prototypist, and uh, yeah, he was. Uh, they they both worked together already on on two watches. One mm -hmm. of them was a uh, Furlan Mari for only watch, uh, yeah. which was a, a special calendar mechanism. I believe they called it what was it? The, was it sidereal calendar or something like that? Could I, be. I don't remember, but but it was a, a, a perpetual calendar mechanism. Uh, uh, for the for the watch mm. and, and very very impressive okay. stuff uh, and now yeah they're kind of uh, and now uh, now and the, the guys now dug into uh, uh, d d dive dove into the micro rotor and yes. uh, I love micro rotor movement because uh, th there's just something magical but mm -hmm. uh, I've heard stories about uh, complicated watches with uh, micro rotor movements that have uh, had a problem uh, with the, the the micro rotor not uh, providing enough energy for mm -hmm. the, the the complex uh, mechanism to function uh, properly um, and so we're talking about innovation here so and what I like is that they try to enhance the efficiency of the micro rotor by adding like a like a sort of a catapult uh, effect yeah. with a with a spring yeah. um and if you look at it the watch from the from the front it is maybe not the best looking watch it has a bit of a strange disbalance there is an an opening on the on the dial yeah. that kind of okay it shows the uh, the mechanism and everything but it aesthetically i don't think it's the most pleasing creation sure but when you turn that watch on its back my god it's very very it's very impressive incredible yep. it's just incredible um so uh you're smiling no, yeah, yeah you, okay i i know where you want to go no i'm not going to go there go there no it's uh it's an expensive creation of course it's uh, i think it's yep. uh, 80 uh, 79000 without taxes yep. Um, I know there's also been some comments uh, that uh, yeah, well, it's not completely proven that it works, and that da da da. Well, the brand stated it outright. They exactly. Said, they said there's exactly. no tool available to measure if this is actually making a difference. Yeah. But I think that the whole point is is more so than the watch or how the dial looks or how the hands look or whatever is 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 the fact that uh, uh, Dominique Reno is exactly. back. Yeah, he's, exactly. He's, There's great watchmakers yeah. trying uh, new things. For sure. um, and this is it's interesting uh, that you can't measure it, by the way. You think that it wouldn't be too hard? But the, but the, 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 the Tessier said in a, that he made this a full, like a large scale uh, yeah. model, and then he could actually see that it was working more efficiently. Yeah. So yeah. and it was working better. So um, yeah, I also don't know how. I'm yeah. not that technical, again. This so is, I don't know how to measure that. But, but it's this a, is a, this is like when when Formula One teams talk about how their new rear diffuser is is you know giving them a marginal margin, gains. You know they can measure that because yeah, yeah, they yeah. have all the technology in the world. Yeah. But but I think here it, it it's it's potential for for innovation and it's it's you know it's yeah. just an exciting project and exactly. Uh, and as you said, it's also just good to have him back in the industry to have them both uh, creating uh, stupendously complicated and. Yeah. Beautifully finished uh, movements. Yep. Uh, it's just nice to have creative uh, technicians uh, going at it. It's just uh, definitely, and it's, it's one of seven. Stuff. That's why it's Monday. So there will be six more projects, exactly. uh, which will yep. uh, seek to follow a, a similar mm -hmm. path in in creating basically yeah. something that yeah. that 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 improves upon uh, yeah. uh, some of the some of the things that we've seen in in in, in yeah. watches before so, uh, so that's it's an um, exciting thing to follow along with for sure yeah. so cool that's that why i put list. it on the list nice fantastic thomas what is your second pick my second is the white dial speedmaster from omega uh, uh, we're not allowed to call it the daniel craig are we not no Nope. Now I got scored for it by that R can RJ. Ruin RJ's day more yeah. than a titanium yeah. Yeah. Uh, watch, actually. Yeah. So yeah. titanium Daniel Craig. It is the watch that <laughs> <laughs> that was teased by <laughs> Daniel Craig. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, that's just a fact. It's a fact. Yeah. That's no, just I can't help it. I'm, <laughs> I'm just reporting here. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, it's uh, it's if I'm correct, it's just the, the regular sapphire sandwich. Uh, with a white dial and mm -hmm. it's a uh, glossy uh, almost enamel looking white yeah. i'm still confused is it enamel no, is it enamel, enamel looking pink? is it enamel looking i think what it's, is just enamel a, it's, looking? it's a glossy <laughs> enamel it's looking. A, something it's a, looking like enamel it's a glossy <laughs> white dial and 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 the printing looks as though it's I, I don't know i haven't seen none of us have seen it that's in, the in whole person. thing I, I, uh, I, morgan has seen it so he'll, we'll take his word for it that's how he described it and uh, and uh, you know, hey, the and I'm looking. But this is the fun thing I think here is that it's it's so nerdy. If I come home mm. to my fiance and I say, "Fiance, have launched, 
Yeah, that's been for years. Oh, okay, okay. I, I so really we had some real make, news now. I really should make some work <laughs> of it. But <laughs> You're a long-time girlfriend. If I go to oh, okay. uh, my uh, my female roommate <laughs> and, I, uh, <laughs> and I tell her, like, Omega, I've just introduced a wide dial for this people. It's like, yeah. Really? That's, that's some paint. What are we talking about? Yeah. Why, Why is that but, paint? News? But, you know, for us watch nerds, it's it's But it's a good looking a watch. It's a good looking watch. That's the thing. That's why I wanted to include it. But yeah. I, I think it's just it's well done. I mean uh, Do you want to say anything about the price as well, or you're not going stepping into that minefield? Uh, I think <laughs> people will find something to complain about. Yeah, I think yeah. it's uh, completely uh, explicable the difference. There's a reason. It, RJ explained it. It's it's to do with the process of producing that dial and and, and that you know, enamel that, that, looking. Exactly. <laughs> it's just a different process, right? I mean, making something yeah. look like enamel. <laughs> it's incredibly <laughs> it's so expensive. expensive. And difficult. Yeah. No, but but hey, there's a reason there, and and you know, hey, prices are going up, and and it's 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 yeah. Well, we we all feel the same as probably yeah. our listeners about it. So there's yeah. a new James Bond coming. Just wanted to say that. Okay. I always forget okay. his name. I was kind of hoping that you... Aaron? Did. Yeah. Two A's? Yeah. Aaron? Yeah. I don't know. Aaron. I, don't, I forget his last yeah. name. Yeah. I hope his favorite color is white. So he can... <laughs> in other non-related the... news? Uh, no, it's not. Oh, Daniel not sure. Craig was... Uh, uh, no, please, of course, no, it's please. Not. Let's try and not derail this too bad. My second pick... Um, it's Friday, huh? Oh, it's Thursday. I, I don't know whether to go with the one that's crossed out on my list or with the one that isn't crossed out on my list, um, but I will go with the one that's not crossed out. Um, again, stepping into a minefield. Uh, I'm going to say the Blank Pound 50 Fathoms. No, uh, 42 no, 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 mil. No, 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 okay. No. Well, then we'll go with the Breitling uh, <laughs> Chronomat B01, 42 UK limited edition. It's a fantastic yeah, take on the Breitling a, Chronomat. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, no, I, well, you know, th so I was sort of 50-50. It's, it's the, the new Blanc Pain. Yeah. We'll leave it for a hands-on article, I think. The we'll Blanc Pain. That there's a new Blanc Pain, 50 Fathoms. There is, yeah. And, there is. Uh, but my pick is the Brightly. <laughs> I thought it was really good. It's a black dial with sort of a slightly uh, uh, sort of dark gray uh, subdial. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, there's no way to not get in trouble here. So no. it's all good. Um, yeah, I like that Breitling. It's a good version of the Chronomat. It's a, uh, it's a bit sad that it's a UK uh, limited edition, and that it's not one that they've put in the catalog. So they're only they really 250 it. pieces of it. They've been doing these uh, limited editions recently. There was a lately the that diver that came out. Uh, there's been a German uh, limited edition, the Danube. Uh, limited and then there was also a, a uk one so they've been kind of playing with uh, market the market german uh, one yeah it came out i think earlier earlier this week oh um yeah i i saw it on it's starting to show that you're Instagram. a bit of a breitling collector uh, yeah of course i mean really this, we got the book back there right behind you yeah yeah, yeah. well it's good you're in the know are you a member no of the squad thing. there's no such thing as a breitling collector um <laughs> you never really own a breitling no, okay, it's fine. Yeah, um, yeah so, so I, I like so that Breitling. Stumble uh, onto we've it. mentioned the blank pain, so... No, we haven't. Okay, <laughs> we'll, we'll edit that out then. Uh, no, we don't edit anything here. Um, perfect, so Lex, yeah. <laughs> what is your next pick? I have uh, I have an Aude Marbiguet uh, Mar to pick. That? And yeah. uh, I know it... No, it's not the John Mayer. I'm sorry, Thomas. I know Thomas is a great fan of the guitar player, not necessarily yeah. the watch collector. Or are you also a fan of the watch collector, John Mayer? <laughs> Or just the, the guitar player, primarily right? the guitar player. Yeah, even, yeah, yeah, not even the singer, I guess. But the, the no, guitar definitely player. not. I don't. I don't think anybody <laughs> is. Is it? No. All right. Never mind. No, my pick is a uh, the Royal Oak uh, Jumbo Extra Thin Open Worked in White Gold. Yeah, it's so silly really expensive. Yeah, finally. yeah, oh. yeah. yeah. Oh. Who would have thought? Yeah. Well, it's. A I thought you like the rubber bezel one. Oh my God! No, <laughs> I, re I got it now. <laughs> No, that no, don't get me started. Okay, no, please don't get me please, started. Please, I had a huge, I had a, a two-part discussion. You got the, into a fight at, at, at the AP house. <laughs> they threw you out yeah. of the AP house. Yeah, they Thank did. Like, anyway, so that's because I want to get back into the AP house. I picked this one, and uh, as you know, it's, it has the uh, the classic jumbo measure. So it's a thirty nine millimeters, eight point one millimeter thick uh, jumbo, and the caliber uh, seventy one twenty four is just two point seven mm -hmm. millimeters thick. And normally, I'm not that big a fan of skeletonized watches. No, but you never like skeletonized nah, watches. Nah, but I had the chance to put this on my wrist. And 
it, it, it's the, the 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 shine of the uh, of the white gold, and then the, there is the, uh, the 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 grayness of the of the skeletonized movement, and it's the the finishing is just amazing, and and and, and everything, and it's 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 a ridiculous watch. Okay, right. it's also right. a ridiculous price. Do you know it? Off the top of your head, yeah, it's oh, you have it on off the top of the bottom of your list. four hundred euros or dollars or okay or, or peanuts. It's 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 incredibly expensive, but it's also incredibly it's two pretty. hours parking in Amsterdam. So that's, <laughs> that's true. I mean, <laughs> to be fair, I, I I haven't seen it uh, myself, but I saw Morgan's pictures of it, which we've it's overlaid stunning. over the over yeah. the video for those watching yeah. on YouTube, and it is it is very impressive. It is incredibly yeah. impressive. I w- yeah. I will write a, a, li- a little story about it because no, uh, it it really works. And normally you would say, leave the jumbo alone, but anyway. No, but it's it's fantastic. It's it's really nice. And there were there was a there was a, a plethora of uh, new uh, Royal Oaks. Okay. There was also one with the creme brulee dial. Okay, perfect. Like so, that's some picks from AP. Uh, Thomas, over to you. What's your third and final pick? My third and final pick is the Piaget Polo seventy nine. It's an expensive watch. That is an expensive watch. <laughs> I figured I need to keep up with uh, with right? Lex here. Eighty, something like that. Yeah, yeah. we've gone quite autorology actually. We in, did in general. Yeah, um, let me consult my list. Uh, oh, I've got I've got more affordable stuff in the honorable mentions, but um, okay. yeah, Piaget Polo. It's a, mm-hmm. a bit of a revival watch. I get very strong. A bit, mind. a bit. A bit. <laughs> it's a revival. Watch. <laughs> it's a revival watch. That's the revival watch. I would even this year so far for sure. Yeah, yeah. I definitely. Think, and I think that's that's the core of it. It's um, I think it's one idea executed to the fullest and that's actually what i criticized about it in the sunday morning showdown because i had mm. to but i think it's uh, it's just really well executed it gives me pure miami vice uh, vibes it, and it, uh, it's also a bit of a right time and a right mm. place kind of watch because it, it feels like that thing let's say two or three years ago it, it would have I, I wouldn't say that it would be a dud uh, back then, but I think that that nowadays, with how people are starting to to look yeah. at those kinds of watches, mm. and, and there's a little bit of, of hype building around it, yeah. um, it, it, it's it it was really good timing on their part to to put that together and to release it. <clears throat> I agree. I think also that um, they it also bad pro- taste a few years ago. Yeah, would, and it yeah, isn't and, now and I think they also profited from the fact that uh, Vacheron did the two 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 before. Yeah, the I think if it, sort of if it would the if they would would have switched the uh, releases uh, around. I think the Polo would have been uh, less... Uh, because the 262 two looks agree. really modest next to the <laughs> Piaget, if you put them side by yeah, side. true. Yeah. That's interesting. Well, that, that <laughs> yeah, Polo, the Polo is, is like is opulence is, in, yeah. in a watch. Hedonism it's hedonism uh, in, the, in the metal. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's just, yeah, it's pure gold. But uh, it's very interesting stuff. RJ was obviously a big fan uh, uh, of the of the Polo. And uh, yeah, I look forward to hopefully seeing it at, uh, at Watches Wonders. We will. Trying we it on will. the wrist. I think that would be, uh, be very nice. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Um, yeah, so I'll give sure. you guys my third uh, and final pick. It's a Sin, Sin U50 SL, which is a uh, black uh, you... DLC I, I... tegmented steel with a loom dial. We're supposed oh, to know it. I was... Uh, yeah. Ah, the a, loom it's dial. A, it's a U50, U50 with, a, loom. with a DLC, a black DLC case <laughs> uh, with a full loom dial. Yeah, that's nice. And I think we don't have enough black cased loom dial divers, which once upon a time there were some Tag Heuer models that were a little bit like that with those Monan cases. Mm-hmm. And isn't it's, that um, still one in the catalog, cool, uh, in the, the Aqua Racer? Uh, isn't there an Aqua yeah, you're Racer? Right. Full, it's, it's uh, not, full loom? Uh, is it DLC? It is DLC. You're yeah. right. That's yeah. a, that, that is a good watch. I think York reviewed it a couple yeah. of years ago. That was uh, yeah, a really, really nice watch. I shot some uh, some pictures for it. That, yeah. That's that's a, a good example and probably the spiritual successor to the one I was uh, mm-hmm. uh, referring to now. But, uh, but yeah, that's in. It's a uh, limited edition of 500 pieces, ah. 3,250 euros, 41 millimeter case by 11.2 millimeters thick. And uh, that's that's good proportions. I really like it. I think it's it's a really, really, really cool watch. Yeah. That's the price on the on the bracelet, by the way. It's a little cheaper if you go for the for the rubber or the textile strap. Tegumented underneath the yep. PVD? Or? Yeah. Nice. yeah. Tegumented. That's yeah. nice. Yeah. yeah. So I thought that was a that was a good one. Um, and uh, yeah, I think with that we can sort of jump onto our honorable <clears throat> mentions. Right? Ah. Honorable mentions. Well, I'm not going to honorably mention the white moon swatch mission to the moon face with Snoopy on the dial. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Okay. I'm also not mentioning the Blancpain 50 Fathoms again. 
the one in the 42.3 millimeter case. And it's, I'm, just, just but let me just quickly, okay. quickly say what I, the thing is <clears throat> last year we saw the uh, bronze gold uh, one, the, mm -hmm. the X3 uh, uh, of the, yeah. and it had the, uh, the old fashioned case shapes with these very long lugs and everything and the um, brushed uh, ingress, gold. Uh, indicator. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. It, it looked uh, very retro and I, I just wondered what would this look like in steel? Or either, or in titanium, yeah. or white gold, yeah. but not the very obvious luxury choice. Everyone was expecting it, right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, so now they they come with a with a with a new one, a smaller one, because the the, the current one or is is forty five millimeters, so that's mm -hmm. it's really big. So this is smaller, but it's also just a reduction of this current model. I mm -hmm. think it was introduced in two thousand seven. Um, with the domed uh, sapphire bezel and everything, and 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 yes, the proportions are nicer, but it still has the the sunray uh, uh, dial. So yes, you have a titanium case and a titanium bracelet, mm -hmm. but then that version only comes in a blue uh, su sunray yeah. uh, dial. Uh, maybe you can also get it on the the, the titanium bracelet. Yeah. You can get it but on the, the black, of course. The, but also yeah. the black is sunray. Mm. So why not pair matte black to brushed titanium, and then you can still have the uh, the shiny uh, uh, bezel. It would have been <clears> nice <throat> to 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 sort of pull back the lux yeah. fader and to raise a little bit the tool watch. Yeah, fader. Just, just just kind yeah, of swap exactly. those around so a little bit. So I still feel a little bit torn. Is it? It it, yeah. it it's just too luxury heavy mm. for me. It, it, it looks great yeah. size wise pictures you see of it on people's wrists it looks yeah. fantastic uh, but I do agree with uh, that it's 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 kind of close but no no cigar and that, and, and, yeah. and especially th th that bracelet which to me is is not the best option the best option is is on the tropic on rubber the tropic strap. rubber yeah, yeah fantastic yeah. but that bracelet with a with a butterfly clasp without yeah. any sort of uh, security system without any sort of extension uh, it's it's a little bit uh, odd especially when there's a seamaster uh, at a fraction of the price yeah. uh, that has those features uh, in it's in, in, it's in, a diver identity crisis it's, going yeah. on it's yeah. a it's a dive uh, dive watch that, that that talks the talk but it deserves not a mention but yeah it, it's it's sadly sadly and disappointingly it it doesn't it, it can't quite be put up there no uh, obviously <clears throat> this is being said without having seen it in the metal uh, true so we true. partially reserve yeah. judgment until that that has been done yeah. but but only part first impressions are are bittersweet yeah uh, i'm also not going to mention the bull uh, Bulgari Octo Finissimo Sketch Dial, the new one, although it looks awesome. But mm. I uh, I already picked ridiculously expensive stuff, so I also picked something um, more affordable, and that okay. is the uh, new Mido Ocean Star GMT Special Edition. So that's a, a 40.5 millimeter mm -hmm. steel watch, funky looking blue, uh, has a flyer GMT movement. It's a three hertz uh, Powermatic 80. Some yep. people commented on the three hertz movement that um, it makes the second hand not move in a luxurious way. I've never read that before. Because I also really like uh, movements that have a, like an 18,000 uh, VPH uh, yeah. uh, beat because yeah. I really like the slowness of yeah. the movement. But I never heard that a 3 hertz yeah. uh, beat yeah. looks uh, cheap. But anyway, really, you <clears throat> to see the second hand being sort of jittery or whatever, you would have to look really, really up close yeah. and pay a lot of attention. But at... at, and, at, at at arm's length, it's it's yeah. Anyway, so uh, but and and this is a uh, when you buy Please it on refer the to uh, our former episode. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you buy this on the uh, the multi link bracelet, that is very uh, very seventies. Yeah. Uh, you you pay uh, fourteen hundred and forty euros, and That's I think uh, that you for that kind of money you buy uh, a lot of watch. Yeah, um, yeah, and I know Mido is a. Uh, it's not the biggest name here, especially here in the Netherlands. I think it's doing better in the U.S. And mm -hmm. uh, but I have a little bit of a history uh, with uh, with Mido yeah. because of my dad's uh, watch and everything. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they're doing quite uh, quite some nice uh, stuff. Yeah, uh, for sure, for sure. So um, so that's why um, this Mido. Honorable mention. Fantastic. Well deserved. So, uh, Thomas, what are your honorable mentions? My honorable mention, my first honorable mention is, uh, or my second, the Zenith was the first, but you gave it right. a titanium. So, yeah. the, the titanium Chrono Master. Chrono Master. My second is the um, uh, Freddy Constant uh, Second Second uh, collaboration, 
Which I'm trying was, to picture it. It's just a very basic Frédéric Constant dress watch. Mm -hmm. um, but then, second, second, the French artist has sort oh. of messed up all the markers. All the dial markers. Yeah. Randomly. Sure. Yeah. All the text, the dial text is sort of scribbly. Um, and a couple more of those uh, details. And I think the really cool thing is that it's a bit of a lighthearted fun because the mm -hmm. whole idea of the watch is that it should communicate that Frédéric Constant is actually... A very fun. good product that's okay. largely being produced by hand, mm. and rather than run an advertising campaign telling people that with a picture of a watchmaker, as everyone does, they said, uh, "Well, second, second, how do would you get this message across?" And he just amped up the handwork to the point where it's completely messed up, and it looks like a toddler did it, which I think is a really funny way of doing it. And so I think it's. Um, it's mm. conceptually fun. It may be an entirely fabricated story uh, behind it. It's possible. Hey, but the but, result but still, it speaks for um, itself, and it's yeah, it's and it a shows cool some watch. fun, and it actually it actually looks really cool. I think it looks really good. So for sure, Frank Zappa once asked himself, "Does humor belong in music?" And uh, I can now ask the question: Does humor belong in watchmaking? I think I wrote a story about that once, and I well, think I, this is not for me. I don't own any fun. Watches, so yeah, it's, I, I wouldn't I, buy I, that. Sort I of thing, do own uh, a couple of fun watches, so to speak, the Benzilla. But I also have a um, a Fortis. You've never seen this because I never <laughs> wear it. I have a Fortis with a, uh, a dial designed by uh, Rolf Sachs. It's oh. like a blackboard. So instead oh. of the uh, nor the usual numerals, you have these. Uh, yeah. Other kinds of stuff done in uh, in crayon, like uh, you would uh, explain that, uh, math that, on a on a on a blackboard. If I'm counting correctly, that puts you at two Fortis watches, which makes you a Fortis collector. I am the only Fortis collector in the world. Okay. I'm the most. It's an honor to be uh, in the presence Fortis. of one. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Oh, anyway, um, so <clears throat> and no, that, but it, and uh, it, but it's, honestly, it's, this watch, I don't think it's necessarily a joke. I think it's more a sort of lighthearted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. The, the other one, I, I don't think that the 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 the, the Rolf Sachs one is a is a joke either, because it, the, he's a very serious and yeah. uh, acclaimed designer. So, uh, but it's not really but humor. It's, it's lightheartedness in a way. The the second yeah. second. Uh, there, there's yeah. certainly a bit of True. humor. There is, uh, there is, if you see the yeah, website, it's not humor. It's lightheartedness. But but, but yeah. I have to say, I really I really think there are, there are a few people doing it right, and I think second mm. second is. He's yeah. just. Yeah. He's consistently so sort of clever and witty. Oh, yeah. That okay. Whatever he does is always sort of one okay. step wittier yeah. than I would have expected. Okay. Yeah. That's Where cool. most brands, if they want to do something fun, they do something super obvious. And he's always a bit so. Uh, okay. I've heard so there's the, going to be. It rubs uh, me the right way. Let I've heard there's going to be a VPC, a uh, second, second collaboration. Um, would you consider doing a collaboration with, uh, with someone? Uh, like that, like a party like that. I that would definitely be open yeah, to yeah, something. Yeah. Like, I mean, if that could be yeah, cool. If there actually, was a yeah, conceptually cool, cool yeah. idea. Yeah. Like if, if he dropped me an email, hand. like... <laughs> <laughs> Frikandel second hand. <laughs> Maybe not. not. That. I think that's Maybe already that's exactly not what that. you shouldn't do. <laughs> no, but well, it's, I mean, for sure. I mean, it's... No, there's pizza watches. Oh yeah, true. Yeah, studio, but Studio Underdog but was always me, uh, a bit of a tongue-in-cheek, uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, like like Richard, that, I remember. Is that lightheartedness or is that humor? It, but it, lighthearted it's, it's humor. a bit between yeah well it, but it's the same as is the, the i mean i remember early days of the website it was always like here meet the team and it was uh richard rich and dick and it was just the same uh it was it was just richard three times and and it's just fantastic just just funny stuff yeah. that you that you really don't get in an, in an industry which otherwise it's safe to say it takes itself a little too seriously yeah there's also a good thing a big difference don't. between swiss humor and british humor yeah Exactly. But second second is uh, French. French. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, that, that's so. That's also, I do have so, to admit, I have a bit of a connection with him because back when I was working ah, as a vintage dealer, yeah. and he was still in the in the phase where he did just, uh, he took vintage watches and put his own seconds hand on mm. there. Oh, yeah. And he wasn't yet <clears throat> as big as in collaborating with all these brands. Yeah. And I then sold him a uh, Patek Philippe. Uh, I think a disco volante back at the oh, day. Oh wow! So I was very early on, sort of. Oh, okay. I got this email from this guy, like, "Hey, can I buy it?" And uh, I'm second, second, and I'm looking into it. So I've, I feel a yeah, bit yeah, of a yeah. connection because I, I kind of saw him come up in that sense. And hey, it's we'll, just, uh, uh, it's we'll, really cool. we'll manifest it, and uh, who knows? And we now we also learned that there are light-hearted French people. Yep. Which is also sure. 
interesting. Yeah. You do know that we have Morgan in the... In yeah, the that, yeah, that's Lex, why I again, getting himself into trouble, <laughs> but that's fine. Um, <laughs> shout out to our French listeners. Um, so, uh, no, is bonjour. that all? There's now not a single continent that doesn't yeah. want to yeah. kill Lex. Uh, it's bonjour. <laughs> bonjour. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but uh, Thomas, uh, do you have any other uh, honorable mentions? Um, there? I do. Uh, we'll just um, run through them on rapid your fire. tiny list. The Rado, Diastar, oh, yeah, Anatom, <clears throat> 40th anniversary edition, which is uh, also a bit of a throwback watch. Mm -hmm. I've always had a bit of a soft spot for Rado ceramic watches. It, to me, it's just a thing from my youth. You know, mm -hmm. the, the ones with the entire bracelets. Yeah, the, the black. Uh, uh, what are they called again? Ring, the, I'm like around your. What's it called actually? The rectangular ones with the, the integrated bracelets. It's not the dia star. No, it's, it's not the uh, dia star. Uh, no. Anatom? No, well, the anatom is the current one. Well, whatever. That's for me. Yeah. That's an idea. Like as a kid, I used to see those watches. I'm like, what? What's that? That's kind of cool. I always seen it as a Bible Belt watch, because because of its blackness, <laughs> it uh, it tapped into the uh, the the it's dark. It's so oh, nice knowing no, you. Like, what? It, we're we're the never problem recording is, an episode on a Friday this again. week. We won't know where it's coming from. <laughs> yeah. it's, is it's, it the it, French? Yeah. Is it the Bible Belt? <laughs> anyway, this one. It's a bit of a throwback. It's ceramic, rado, but it's got baguette um, it's, diamond markers. It's, it's super really nice. Cool. Yeah, yeah, it is. What's it funny is. about those diamond markers is you you said, yeah, I picked the one with the diamonds. I was like, there's one with diamonds? And <laughs> I didn't notice it. I looked at the picture of all of them. And because they are baguette cut diamonds, they really look like like very sort of sharp indices. And you look closer and you yeah. can see It's very good looking. Plus, watch. it's the only one that doesn't have a vignette dial. And as you know yeah. from the Pet Peeves yeah. Uh, yeah. episode, yeah. a vignette yeah. dial is a sure way to get we've, in my... Uh, I think we've all had enough of uh, vignette dials. Yeah. What's the price of the Rado? I think about 11K. Yeah. Which in large part is in the, in the baguette. Yeah. Yeah. I would say. I'm not sure what the other models. Are. I also like the idea that They're you have these. Four, I think okay. yeah. you have the hardness of the ceramic, then there's the hardness of the diamonds and the shininess. And it, I think it kind of makes it, and it's, it's cool. a, and it's a good it's looking. A good I don't know. Yeah. I think it's, really it's a answer. very good yeah, looking yeah. watch. Yeah. That's definitely a, a conversation starter. That, yeah. that's not. And we a tried watch it on. Not day. not that one. We tried no, the, the other one with the, the vignette blue. dials, yeah. and they the, the proportions are really nice. And it super surprised by those. And it's and it's a tad retro, but not in a. In an obvious way, and not sentimentally mm. so. Exactly, but yeah, they're, yeah, they're yeah, yeah, they're not sentimental at all. Well, it was always a sort of space age looking watch. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah, always exactly. a very forward, uh, forward thinking kind of product, and, yeah. and now it still seems that way, uh, but with that little hint of uh, of sort of nineties. And or, it's uh, still sober enough for God fearing watch lovers. Exactly. I'm starting to wonder if you're sober enough for a podcast. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, clearly, in any uh, case, not, clearly clearly not, your not yeah, So let me, let me actually rapid fire these honorable mentions. Uh, the first one is the Ulysse Nardin Freak One Ops, because it's a... What does Ops stand for? I'm not sure. Operations. Yeah, exactly. That's uh, yeah. this, this is just a serious, it's serious the, question. It's the military uh, is it? freak. No, <laughs> no, but it's 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 got it's a, a great you carbon see soldiers case. running around with those all the time. Exactly. No, but it's got a, a fantastic carbon case and some sort of olive drab uh, details. No, and it it's just it's just a fantastic uh, looking yeah, a take good on looking the freak. Watch. I think I uh, there was the the, the uh, razzle dazzle one that we had in the office, Oof. which was very very that very was cool. super cool. And it's a watch that lends itself. Uh, very aptly to just executions that are a little bit out there. And this is one and that I'm just a fan of. Yeah. Uh, the next thing, uh, and it's kind of weird to hear me say this, but it's the Hublot MP10. That, that's a piece uh, 10, just because that was impressive. it's so that's impressive. That's the one with the vertical movement, right? Yeah, correct. Vertical, it has two, it has two weights um, that sort system. of, uh, yeah, move. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's, uh, I got to see that in, uh, in Amsterdam a couple of weeks ago and it's, uh, it's big, but it's really it's, impressive. It's really big. It's quite big, yeah. It's yeah. a bit like those mint boxes that I have on my, uh, <laughs> yeah. on my desk. In, yeah, in mint. God, yeah, that's that was a, the inspiration. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not true. So that's that's definitely. Does it sound that way with the weights? No, it doesn't. No? It okay. doesn't. The weights have uh, springs, so it's very uh, it's very uh, very light. And my final one, it's a bit of a shameless plug, uh, and it's the RZE Resolute Pro Contour. Uh, that we did. Uh, this is a Fratello limited edition with a carbon dial. If you're uh, listening still, to this, it's too it? late. It's oh. no, it's it's. Yeah, it's we no had our a week of pre-orders. No, then it's and, not a plug. Uh, it's not a plug. Not a plug. No, exactly. Well, but yeah, but it's a bit of a you know, it's it's one of but our limited maybe editions. Maybe you could elaborate um, a little bit on how you got into character. 
You watched oh, it for the yeah for, for the, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So your Daniel Day Lewis. It was the, a five the, month the process. Yeah. Uh, basically, it, it's uh, and was, it uh, mostly growing. The the beard was yeah. the, the hardest part, but mm. uh, yeah, yeah that, no no that no it, there was no getting into character. It was just a fun project. Yeah, it was. Uh, we went out there and 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 uh, and uh, ran a Land Rover through some puddles uh, and uh, you oh know, that's what puddles just, are for. It was just uh, like the first sunny day of the year, and it was great. And yeah. and I think the watch is fantastic. It is a uh, it is a you know really nice. I was very watch. happy yeah. to be a part of that. Uh, that project and uh, yeah I hope that those that bought it will enjoy it uh, I think and, uh, people who didn't buy it and then months from now or I don't know years from now they will come across it but some, yeah and then they will see it in the in the metal and they will actually regret the fact that they didn't hit the buy button because that is a watch that you need to see in real life to yeah. fully appreciate yeah. what it is perfect because yeah. it's a uh, and I would say the really final, neat. the final honorable mention, of course, again to the to the oh. VPC because that's a Q1 release, and uh, yeah, it hey, was the biggest uh, for me. But uh, uh, well, obviously, <laughs> yeah. was it now? Yeah. It was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Was I'm now? still recovering, but uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I think we'll do a uh, we'll do a debrief of maybe a VPC debrief uh, a little later this year. We could do it. That could I'd be, be a fun episode. Too, yeah. But uh, yeah, fantastic. So thanks guys for joining me for the for the list. For yeah. the, for we the don't laughs. have a comment of the week. Uh, we do actually have a yeah. comment of yeah. the week. Thanks, Lex. Yeah, 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 I'm, yeah, glad yeah. Uh, I'm glad so that you're... I'm so up. sharp because <laughs> I didn't have a drop to My drink. God. That's good. Uh, we actually it's there's dehydration. That's uh, then it's <laughs> okay. Yeah. So comment of the week comes from uh, James Alexander fourteen, who says, uh, and this is of course in reference to uh, our excuses excuses ah, uh, yeah. podcast. Uh, just uh, drop the excuses and enjoy watches. And he said, uh, there's definitely a problem with watch snobbery and indeed brand snobbery. All product purchasing comes down to the individual taste, regardless of the type of product. If it doesn't resonate, then don't buy it. It's simple, really. Mm. And I think that's that's the whole point that that we were trying to get across, right? It's it's uh, people are entitled to their opinions, uh, but sometimes it does just get a little bit much with this. Uh, it's yeah, too thick. I, it's too thick. I have it's to too say, expensive. credit where credit is due. I loved that episode from you guys, and uh, it was a good <laughs> thing that I wasn't on it because you were recording it just as I was sort of taking it on the chin with the, ah, with the from my watch. So ah, I would have okay. probably been a little less. No, there was, there was some <laughs> really hilarious me. comments. Also, uh, yeah, yeah, I would yeah, listen sure. to the podcast really uh, if only it were shorter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God. Well, that. apologies to those commenters because <laughs> yeah. this week's episode is uh, also a lengthy one, but uh, we'll try to keep it short yeah, going for forward. Sure. Um, yeah. So thanks again, guys. And uh, thank you for tuning in and listening. Remember to like, subscribe, and as always, tune in next week for another episode of Fertello Talks. See you then.